your first meeting trying to figure out what we'll have to do. Welcome to the organizational meeting of the Board of Education. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first order of business tonight is the administering of the oaths <coughs> of newly elected board members, Barbara Frederico, Kelly Person, and Gloria Tolhill. I'll ask each of you to read your oath aloud and then sign the document. Mrs. Frederico? I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Board Member according to the best of my ability. Thank you. Mrs. Person? I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Board Member according to the best of my ability. Thank you. And I'd like to remind each board member to please sign and read the school board's ethics guidelines. The next item on the agenda is the election of the president. May I have a nomination? Seema, or <laughs> Christine? I nominate Seema Rivera. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Barbara? And do I have another nomination? No? Okay, if that's all, then we have all in favor to elect Seema Rivera for the board president. Aye. 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 So that's eight to nothing. I should say any opposed. I didn't hear any. <laughs> um, so Seema, I will ask you now to read the oath. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of President of the Board of Education according to the best of my ability. Thank you. So I'll hand it over to Seema. <laughs> <laughs> Reluctantly, of course. <laughs> Already? <laughs> I think the next thing we have to do is nominate the vice president or elect the vice president. Do you have a nomination? I nominate Tim Haran. Nominate Tim Haran. Okay, and Sean? Second. we we'll second it. Any other nominations? I'll nominate Judy Slack. What's that? I'll nominate Judy Slack. Okay, nomination for Judy Slack. Is there a second? I'll second. And we'll second. Okay, so we'll take, um, is, are there any other nominations? She's not on here, right? No, we don't have Okay. That. We need to make sure they get a chance to say something. Okay. Um, do we do it on paper or do we just raise our hands? We'll probably just raise our hands, right? Say something. Well, typically the candidates get to make a statement okay. for the voting if it's contested. Oh. So do you each want to take a turn making a statement? Do you want to go first? <laughs> Okay. Um, I appreciate the uh, nomination and uh, would look forward to uh, being vice president and working with SEMA and the rest of the board. Um, this is the third year for me of a third year term, the beginning, and so I feel like I have two years worth of uh, good experience and uh, I enjoy uh, the board members and the work we do and uh, I would look forward to serving as vice president. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the nomination to be vice president. I've been on the board for 11 years. Um, I think I know what's going, <laughs> going on most of the time. And uh, I think the reason that this I would be a, a good vice president, I am, as each of us is um, concerned about the education of uh, the students of Gilderland, and I feel that I have the time uh, necessary to devote to such an office uh, and the understanding of what it means. Thank you. Um, so we'll go ahead and vote. Uh, voting for Tim Horan. Uh, need to use the ballots. 
Oh, we have to use the ballots. Okay, use your ballots, please. <laughs> and let's pass them over to, to me. So the, you want me to just count them and, and tell you? Okay. So for 10, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 votes. And for Judy, we have 2 votes. Someone put me down for vice president also. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe by accident. So um, with a 5 to 2 vote, 10, the vice president. Congratulations, Thank you. everybody. Thank you. Okay. So the next thing on the agenda is the appointment of officers. Can we have him in? Oh, it's that? He has to read. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. It's Team, you have to read the oath. It's next. Oh, okay. It's yep. next to you. Next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the but I got to give another speech, that would be great. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Vice President of the Board of Education according to the best of my ability. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is appointment of officers. So do we go one by one here for this? Okay. So are there any questions or discussion? Uh, make Sean? a motion to nominate the appointment of, or I make a motion to appoint the officers as presented in the agenda. Okay, the way it's written there. Any other questions or comments? Oh, I'll second. The second. Anybody have questions? Okay, so we'll vote for the appointment of officers. All in favor? Aye. 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 So it passes 8 0. Other appointments? Right, so next on the agenda is the other appointments. Um, anybody want to make a motion or have questions, Sean? Make a motion to appoint the individuals for under other appointments in the agenda. Thank you. Second, Barb. Any questions or comments? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 It passes eight zero. Next in the agenda is authorizations. Someone want to make a motion, Tim? I'll make the motion to uh, pass all the authorizations as presented. Okay. Is there a second? Christine? Questions or comments on this? <clears throat> okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 8 0. Next is uh, official undertakings, bonding of personnel. Is there a motion, Sean? Make a motion to approve the official undertakings as presented in the agenda. Is there a second, Barb? Questions or comments? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Passes 8 0. Next is the designations for the proposed Board of Ed meeting dates for the 1920 school year. Do I have a motion? Judy? Is there a second? second? Tim? Are there any questions or comments on this? I think in the body that we also have to designate the official newspapers, banks, uh, in addition to the regular meetings. I think the meetings were just an attachment there. Oh, below? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'd offer that as a friendly amendment to the motion. Okay. I just have one question because I forgot. The um, April 22nd date, why is that on a Wednesday instead of Tuesday? I suppose he's going. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Sean, you made a motion to move <coughs> the... I just offered a friendly amendment to the initial motion, so the, the initial proposer and seconder will have to agree to that. To add all other items? To add, yeah, to add the official newspapers, banks, and the regular meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moved. Second? Okay, yeah. okay well, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 8-0. So, are there under other items? Sean? I'll make a motion to approve other items as presented in the agenda. Is there a second? second. Tim? All in favor for other items? As Aye. is? Aye. 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 Passes 8 0. <clears throat> Next, designation of board committees and school buildings li liaisons. I think you all have a paper copy in front of you. Someone want to make a motion so we can discuss this? Well, at least some of them have more than enough, and some of them don't have enough. I don't know what we're going to do about that. Okay, so first we're looking at the committees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, like communications only has has three. Business practices has a whole bunch. Yeah. Seven. Oh no, this is eighteen nineteen. Alright, so it looks like communications. That one is set for Gloria, Judy, and who is that? Ben? Ben and, and yeah, and then we need one more. One more. Um, so is there someone else that can serve on communications? I have a question. Is this our is this is this the twenty eighteen nineteen one or are these the proposed ones? Oh. Mine's not, my answers are on here. Is this, it, from, is this what happened last year, or is this? Oh, yeah. Yours is, <coughs> your row yeah. is blank. Yeah. Okay. They may have put you where Teresa is. I don't, I don't know if you remember what you put down. Uh, the top is the names of 1819 people. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Right. And then on the bottom, oh, oh, and you are on the, oh, no, but your answers aren't there. Your answers aren't there. I remember. Okay, so, so maybe if we go through each each committee, see, see where so there's. So you could. I'll, I'll serve on whichever ones that we're missing. The communications. Sure. Okay. Thank you. So Kelly, Ben, Gloria, and Judy are on communications. Okay. And for audit, uh, looks like Sean, Tim, Christine, and Omi. Audit has three members though. Yeah, I'm happy to take myself off. <laughs> so who, um, Christine, you'll, you'll stay on there? Sure. Okay. And who else is on there for the four? I think we usually have three for oh, audit. Three. It audit. says three yeah, members. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Um, for CAPSPA, we have two. I only see one alternate written there. Yeah, CAPSPA almost, I mean, just... They they don't have I was um, on that 
a year or two ago. This year they had almost no meetings, almost no organization, um, and it, only one person really has to go and represent the board as far as I can tell. So if, if, if Ben is willing to do that. <coughs> yeah, I'm not really sure what it is or what it entails. That's why I put it as alternate, but I'm happy to. They, they, ha they actually have fairly interesting speakers, but they have a hard time getting people to come, and they, they uh, have their meetings at different schools. Okay. Um, but I, I don't even know if they had a meeting. They may have had one meeting this year. So, so I just go to the meetings. Yeah, go go to the meetings, and you know, if something of value. But actually, the, and and to encourage people to go because their speakers really are generally very good speakers. They speak for twenty minutes or so. Um, there's a nice dinner chance to talk to people from other school boards. So. Judy, do they have you have something else on there? I don't mind. Or anything where they plan the speakers? That'll fill me up with my. <laughs> Uh, That'll fill me I don't I know that they did last year because I wasn't the secretary. I was the secretary the year before, That's and I. Well, I want to be on policy that I can be. I think we did during the summer, but they're missing two officers. Okay, also. Alternate caps so I'll it's, be the it's not a very well organized right. organization yeah. right now. So, did you want to do the banner? Did you guys just discuss? Uh, Sean will be the delegate, and I will be the alternate for caps. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, for NISPA voting, it's like we need two. Um, there's Barb, Judy, and Gloria. We usually work it out. Between the three of you? Yeah. Whoever okay. wants to do it. Mm -hmm. So we'll just keep it, the three of you guys can work it out. Mm -hmm. Is that all right, Judy? Oh, yeah. We, we, usually, we, we go to the uh, convention, which is where the voting delegate is. You do need two names? Oh, that's right. Be they have to give you a. You have to be officially volunteer? appointed. You want to do it, Barbara? You want me to? I, I can do it. Okay. I think Gloria. I. I think I did it last, did it last year. year. And I think Gloria did it the year before. So right. be your turn. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, over to business practices. Um, <laughs> we only need four, and there's seven. I'll take my name off. I, I have that as my second choice, but for the last two years, I've only been on one committee, and I'd kind of like to be able to be on there if that's not too much to ask. So I'm not, then I would be on uh, business practices and communication. But okay. I, if, you know, if it's really important to somebody else, I don't, I don't have to be, but I would like to be on, on sure. those two. So Christine, you're on there. Do you want to stay on there? Yep, I'll stay on there, and I can take my name off policy. Off policy, okay. Um, and then Tim... You put this as your third choice. Yeah, I'll take off of that and stay on policy. Okay. Um, so we have Christine. You don't. You don't have to do a committee. Right. Okay, I'll take myself off. <laughs> so that's four: Christine, Sean, Judy, and Gloria. All right. So let me see, Christine. And then for policy, it looks like we have the four, uh, Barb, Ben, Tim, and, oh, me. Does anybody else want to do policy? Uh, Kelly has not Yeah, that could be Kelly. Maybe Kelly, Kelly do you want to do that one? There's four people on there, right? Or do you somebody already take someone off policy? If yeah, we took off Barb, Christine because she took another one. Okay. You do policy? Okay, and then CPS. So, wait, so who? For so for policy, there's Barb, Ben, T Tim. Tim, and Kelly. And Kelly. Okay. Yep. Uh, for CPSE, we have Barb and Sean. So there's just one right and one alternate. So do one of you want to be? I can be the alternate. It doesn't matter to me. So Sean, you're the alternate. Okay, and then Nisba, we need one and one alternate. And there's nobody in there. You know, the, the thing with that, every, uh, Gloria did a great job last year, 
but she is basically forwarding what we all get anyway. At least that was my experience. So do we even need this this person? Did you do this past your duty? No. No, I, no, I don't it. think I've, I've done, maybe many, many <laughs> years ago, but I, I'm not interested in doing that one. Do you want me to leave her for now? And then we can. I would say we could eliminate it because everything that she forwarded to us, we had already gotten in our inbox. Okay. Linda, do we need this position? that everybody else's experience too I haven't done this one mm -hmm. but yeah I got the information yeah I I you think if we had a liaison though it it might be a reminder because I wouldn't always read the one that came from this but when we got a note from Gloria I would tend to at least look oh. it over I, I, I don't want to do it but I think it it you know makes some amount of difference you we'll can you Gloria can put me down well I was gonna say she's not here so I feel <laughs> she can't defend herself <laughs> 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 well, it sounds like it's not a huge time commitment, no, so she would. No. I don't she think just so. Would forward okay. Stuff that we got. She, she's just a point person, really. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you want me to read through all of them, or do you have them? Read through. Okay. So, for NISBA voting, we have um, Barb, Judy, and Gloria. And Barb is the name mm -hmm. you have to give on to NISBA, and the two alternates are. Oh, no, sorry, this is the same alternate. So CAPSPA, the delegate is Sean, and the alternate is Ben. And for audit, the three members are Christine, Tim, and Sean. For business practices, Christine, Sean, Judy, and Gloria. For communications, Ben, Judy, Gloria, and oh. Kelly. And for policy, uh, Barb, Ben, Tim, and Kelly. For CPSE, we have Barb as a delegate and Sean is the alternate. And then for NISBA advocacy, Gloria is the delegate. And Judy, do you want to be the alternate? Yeah, I could do that. Okay. Just switching it around. Sima, can you repeat the business practices? Sure. Um, that is. Christine, Sean, Judy, and Gloria. There should be four. Mm -hmm. you want, do you want to still do business practices? No. Okay. All right, so now we'll go to the liaisons. So we'll start with Altamont. Looks like Judy, you'd be the delegate. Does somebody else want to be the alternate for Judy? Kelly? Okay, uh, for Gildan Elementary, we just need one. So Christine has that as number one. Do you want to stay? Sure, did, did you want to do that? Um, or I could interview. do that. Same as PTA Council, though. Yeah, I, but I know you wanted to. Be, you PTA were interested council. in doing that this year. I'm happy to do it, but um, I didn't want to take it away from you. I guess so does the point. president do PTA Council? Yeah. Um, and I never did any other PTAs. So. Okay, you can do it then. Okay. So Christine for GES, and does somebody want to be an alternate? I can be an alternate for that. Oh, Kelly, you want to do it? This is the PTA, or is this a building? Is this is the building. Well, this is it's a, a PTA. Going to the PTA meeting. For Linwood, Judy, you already picked some. You already have Altamont, so Gloria or Ben. Did you want to do that, Ben? Um, I I can sure. Yeah. Do you have a higher pick though for the high school? I, I do. You mix them up so. Like from year to year, we. You were Linwood this past year. I was. Mm -hmm. So we'll maybe let Gloria do it. Okay. Do you want to be alternate though? Sure. Thank you. Seema, is it okay that um, Kelly's the alternate for two schools, or do? That's what I was last year. You were alternate for two schools. And a primary for a school. All right. 
No, I, I didn't get a primary, so that's okay. why I ended up here. <laughs> <laughs> So and, and I'll let it shake out and see what happens. Yeah, do you want to finish and then we'll see? Yeah, let's shake it out. Um, as long as they're not the same light. Right. Mm -hmm. So for Pine Bush, Judy are on there, and then Tim. Do one of you want to keep that one or I'm, change it? I, I, when I was looking these over, it looked like some of them um, <laughs> were kind of slim pickings. I'm, I'm fine if you want me to be an alternate if somebody want, doesn't want to do it. Um, I can do a second one. Tim, do you want to do pine bush? I can, sure. Yeah? Okay. And then, Judy, do you want to be the alternate? Okay. Barb had, had said she would, but if... Um, oh, I'm sorry. Barb, do you want to be the alternate for that? I, I'm perfectly happy. Okay. Okay. So, that's fine. so Tim and Barb for Westmere. Um, Christine, you're already doing that. Ben, would you do Westmere then? Sure. So it's going to be Christine, and then Ben is the alternate? No, Ben is the delegate, or the liaison, sorry. Okay. And I'll, I'm the alternate for that. I'm okay with that. Uh, for Farnsworth, there's four or more. So who does not have one yet to put down one for Farnsworth? Sean? You want to keep that, Sean? Sure. Okay. Does anybody want to be the alternate for Farnsworth? I'll do alternate. Tim? The high school. <clears throat> who does not have uh, who does not have a liaison position yet? Alternate. Kelly. Yeah. Kelly? There are two alternate positions. So. We can change one of them. Yeah. It just it means just um, Going to the PTA meetings essentially, and and then if there's anything that the board needs to know, reporting back. Yeah, I mean, I could. They I'll don't have listed on here. Oh, okay. So, so we'll put you down, and then we'll change the alternate, so you're not okay. you're not alternate I'll twice. So does somebody want to be the alternate for the high school? I put, uh, Tim, you're already on there twice. Yeah. <clears throat> So who's going to be the liaison at the high school? Kelly. Ben, do you want to be liaison or alternate? I can be the alternate. Okay. Yeah. And then for a special ed, Barb, are you still good with that? And who's the alternate? Sean. Okay. All right, should I read through them? Yeah, please. Were we going to take Kelly off? Yeah, we'll take Kelly off of one. So you're on two, Kelly, and you're on your two alternates. I'd like to keep Gilderland if that works as an alternate, but Gilderland Elementary. But I'll can I, okay, so I see Gloria's one liaison. Can, can I put her as alternate then for Altamont? And actually, I was Altamont this year, and as you went along, you said you didn't want people doing the same school twice. Do you want to switch with her? I don't. I don't mind. It doesn't make any difference to me. I, I mean, I do. I do like to go, and I don't care. Um, you know. It's nice to, to switch if if you can. Okay. So we can make Judy Linwood, and then make Gloria Altamont. Okay. Yeah. Yep, and we still need an alternate then for Altamont. Do you want to be the alternate, Judy? Yeah, it, that, that's an easy one for me to be the okay. alternate. All right, so okay. for, <laughs> start again. <laughs> so for Altamont, the liaison is Gloria, and the alternate is Judy. For GES, the liaison is Christine, and the alternate is Kelly. For Linwood, the liaison is Judy. And the alternate is Ben. For Pine Bush, the liaison is Tim. And the alternate is Barb. For Westmere, uh, the liaison is Ben. And Seema is the alternate. Uh, for Farnsworth, Sean is the liaison. And Tim is the alternate. For the high school, Kelly is the liaison. And Ben is the alternate. And then for special ed, Barb is the liaison. And Sean is the alternate. Anything wrong? Sure. <laughs> Linda, we'll get a copy of these, won't we? Okay. Um, so my, yes. Just for uh, Kelly's benefit, even though one person is listed as an alternate, 
if that person is busy, you can mm -hmm. talk to any of us and you know, we just send out a blast and somebody usually surfaces I can do it that night. Thank you. Uh, so does it want to make a mo we made a motion to discuss. Any other questions or comments about the positions? I don't think we made a motion. I think we didn't just started discussing. Yeah. I'll make a motion to, to appoint the committees as discussed. You have a second? I'll second. Ben? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes eight nothing. Right, next on the agenda is public comment number one. Linda, do we have anybody signed up? No? All right, so the next thing on the agenda is the consent items. We have the minutes of the June 11th, 2019 meeting, CPSE, CSE recommendations, personnel action, financials, and the textbooks. Sean, you want to make a motion? Make a motion to approve the consent items. Second it. Barb, any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes eight nothing. Next is information, curriculum instruction. Um, Dana. And I'm playing the role of Daniel okay. Singleton tonight. Thank you, Dr. Wells. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. Um, our first item is to congratulate uh, high school teacher Mitch Hahn, who was one of four recipients of the Williams College Olmsted Awards for secondary school teachers. Williams College awarded the annual George Olmsted Jr. Class of 1924 Prize for Excellence in Secondary School Teaching to four outstanding high school teachers. Each year, Williams seniors uh, nominate high school teachers who play influential roles in their lives and learning. A committee of faculty, staff, and students choose winners from among the nominees. Recipients of the award receive $3,000 and an additional 5,000 is given to each recipient's school. The Olmsted Prize was established in 1976 with an endowment from the estates of George Olmsted Jr. and his wife, Frances. And included there is a press release, and I will not read the whole press release to you, but it's an awesome honor oh, absolutely. Uh, for Mr. Hahn, and um, we're just tremendously proud of him to be recognized. He shared um, the experience of going there and being recognized at graduation, he said it was just an extraordinary experience so we're very happy that we can share that good news tonight and and the excuse me if I the five thousand um, dollars mm -hmm. can you just tell us again that the district will be receiving so we've already received the check for five thousand dollars which is very nice and um, it's going to be used for the purchase of a variety of um, materials for our English classrooms so sets of books and other um, mm -hmm. resources to enhance the reading and writing experiences of our high school kids, so it's great. Very nice, yeah. Awesome, congrats. Uh, my next item, each year both the um, high school and <coughs> middle school uh, learning centers provide an annual report to the district office and to the board. Um, the end of year report for the high school library is quite voluminous, and I am not going to read it to you, but it's very, um, uh, interesting information to see just how much our library at the high school is used uh, the kinds of things that the kinds of projects that the kids are doing and the kinds of resources that they use so if you have a few spare moments it is absolutely worth uh, taking some time to see what's been going on there um, our two librarians uh, bernie bott and melissa gergen just do an amazing job with our students and there's reference in here uh, to our emc square program which is their inquiry based independent study that is really the essence of what inquiry and library use is right now. So please take a look at that. Uh, the second report is from FMS, and the uh, team over there also puts together a report uh, filled with photos and lots of information about the energetic work of middle school students. I encourage you to take a look at their um, discussion about how Chromebooks were used this year in the first year of the one-to-one -one initiative. There's some information there about our, um, our uh, um, FCAST help desk, so our middle school help desk program. And then there's some tremendous photos of our studio that got a major upgrade not this, uh, a year ago, summer. Um, and this past school year was the um, kind of the maiden voyage of that new equipment. It is very impressive. So if you're over there, it is worth the trip upstairs to take a look at it. 
Uh, the next item, we have a high school student, a ninth grader, Joanna Chen, who is the recipient of the New York State English Council 2019 Creative Writing Award in Poetry for Remember the Stars of the Lost. Uh, Joanna will be invited to the New York State um, English Council Awards Luncheon in October, where she will be honored and have the opportunity to read her work. Additionally, her work will be published in the winter 2020 issue of the English Journal. Again, this is a tremendous uh, recognition for a ninth grade student, for any student, but particularly such a uh, young student in our program. So we're congratulating, <coughs> congratulating Joanna on her accomplishment. And then the next uh, five items are part of our career and technical education approval process. As you know, our um, career and technical education program based out of our business office has been growing in leaps and bounds over the recent years. Um, and part of the work there is to seek CTE program approval from New York State Education Department. And I'll just share this, a career and tech, technical education programs provide academic and technical instruction in the content areas of agriculture, business and marketing, family and consumer sciences, health occupations, technology education, and trade and technical education. CTE programs approved by the State of uh, New York Education Department allow students to earn at least 3.5 credits in focused and rigorous courses that form a cohesive concentration, otherwise known as a sequence, in a career field of study. Program approval is the way the State Education Department ensures that local career and technical education programs meet the policy requirements approved by the Board of Regents. So in your packet today, this is again, it's information. You see several documents which des describe the process that we go through to obtain approval from New York State Education Department. Of course, sequences and descriptions are included for your, your review. We're in the final stages and ready to submit our application. It's the goal to admit, submit the application with signatures from the superintendent and board of ed immediately following the August board meeting. This is exceptional work that was made possible by the tireless efforts of our amazing business teachers, uh, Joan McGrath, Sarah Hubbard, and Michelle Doss, and they've done an amazing job. And you can see the programs that are seeking approval. It's the business career pathways, um, accounting, business management, entrepreneurship, and marketing. So those will come before the board in August. Yeah, but it, you said August 4th, I think. No, I mean, August board fourth. meeting. The August board meeting. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you said August Which 4th, is, and I knew that wasn't. No, we're the, the 13th. Date. Yeah. Oh, there's Gloria. Oh, there she is. <laughs> okay. Very good. Okay, next on the agenda school business information. Neil? Yes, first item this evening is the annual report on cell cellular telephones in accordance with work policy 332. And we have a total of 34 phones that the district has uh, purchased and provides a monthly pro, uh, plan for. It's a total of $829.66 per month, or about $24.40 per phone. There's, a, like I said, a limited number of users, and the criteria for issuing the cell phones are job responsibilities that require frequent travel or time out of the office, high levels of responsibility or decision-making authority where communication access at all times is vinyl, vital, or when communication access is required in the event of an emergency. Any questions? Next item are, is a summary of donations uh, throughout the year. I'll just run through them uh, quickly. We received a trumpet case in mutes from Gary Rebus, eight backpacks and school supplies from School Systems Federal Credit Union, various school supplies from NBT Bank, various school supplies from Girl Scout Troop 1463, a fish tank and various supplies from Ellen McDonald, a metal bench with butterfly back for Farnsworth Middle School from Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Rush, Bonus certificates from Dick's Sporting Goods totaling $500 for the purchase of physical therapy related items made possible through the efforts of Mr. and Mrs. Michael McCollum. 12 safety cones from Mr. and Mrs. Dwayne Robinson. Various high school classroom supplies from Princeton Evangelical Presbyterian Church. Two new bookshelves for the Westmere Library from Mr. and Mrs. Scott Friedman. An echo pen from Mr. and Mrs. Gary Moore. And five flower pots for the Butterfly Station at Farnsworth Middle School from Ms. Lori Matt Murphy. And what I will say is unusual this year is we only received one musical instrument donation. <laughs> and we get more of those, so if anybody has musical, musical instruments, uh, they're looking to pass off, we'll gladly take them from you and I'd be grateful for the donation and pleased to acknowledge it. 
Thank you. Uh, next, Dr. Weil, Superintendent Information. <clears throat> My very first item is uh, recognition of one of our school board members. I'm pleased to report that Benjamin Goes is being recognized by the New York State School Boards Association for his time and effort devoted to participation in board development programs offered through NISBA. NISBA's recognition program has four achievement levels. Members qualify for points by participating in NISBA development activities, including the annual convention, legal conferences, regional workshops. Uh, Benjamin Goes is being recognized for earning the Board Achievement Award Level 1, and I have a lovely certificate for you. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. You. Next time, Level 2. Okay, next, some highlights about our summer programs. Uh, summer in Gilderland is a very busy place. So this year we are participating in the Capital Region BOCES Regional Summer School Program. Uh, this program, again, is held at Mahanison High School. Uh, registration for students attending summer school took place on June 27th and at the Counseling Center here at the high school. Students were able to register for courses and for exams. Uh, classes began yesterday and they end, um, will end on August 16th. And uh, more information is available on our homepage, but I think at this point all of the students who need to go have already had two days of instruction. <laughs> so we also ha host the BOCES Summer School Program for students with, with disabilities at Westmere Elementary School. And we uh, offer our own extended year program for students with disabilities, and that takes place at Gilderland Elementary School. That will begin next Monday and run through August 16th. And we also have a three-week summer program for ENL students that's offered at Gilderland Elementary School. And this doesn't take into account the 40-something um, town camps that are in July and another 15 in August. And um, the butterfly station being open, the organic garden, uh, camp invention. So we got a lot going on. All good. Mm -hmm. Any questions on those? Okay, the next I have an update on our school start time work. Um, the oh. district recently participated in a preliminary conversation with School Bus Consulting. This is a firm that specializes in the design management and operations of school bus management. They've assisted dozens of school districts around the country and in the state to study the implications of school start changes, start time changes on transportation operations. They have the capacity to use our demographic, routing, geographic, and traffic data to consider the impact of the options that our school start time task force drafted earlier this year. During our call, we shared a summary of four potential options. Their work would include an analysis of our data and a visit to observe our operations in action once school begins in September, as well as some potential assistance with community outreach. At the conclusion of our call, SBC agreed to draft a proposal outlining the scope of that work and the potential cost to the district to complete the work on a timeline consistent with our goal to have a decision about any potential changes ready for the 2020-2021 school year. And we shared that proposal Earlier today, Neil and I had a chance to do a conference call with the gentleman from um, the firm earlier today, and um, it'll be up for consideration later on. Barbara? Just a quick question. What are the, when the committees originally got together, there were like seven proposals. Some of them are way out there. Right. Now we're down to what four are you asking them to look at? You're going to want to know the numbers from them. Um, I'll tell you what, I can share. We put together a worksheet for our conference call that has them laid out in a chart. I can send them to everybody tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And we actually did um, four, plus we gave them some general parameters to say, here are some typical time constraints. Like we wouldn't want the high school to start any earlier than, just going from memory here, any earlier than eight. And we wouldn't want the middle school to get out any later than four. And we don't want anyone on a bus more than 40 minutes and several other things. Given that and all of our data, can you come up with the option that we didn't think of? So they're going to work with those kinds of parameters. But I can send out tomorrow the one-page summary of that work. Yeah, that'd be The reason why I ask 
Uh, I don't think anybody was interested in, in messing with the middle school schedule, except maybe five minutes or something like that. And I didn't know if that was one of the four that was thrown into the mix. The, the main thing was simply flipping elementary and, and high school starting times and maybe moving the elementary up, you know, a little bit later, five minutes, ten minutes, um, you know, that type of thing. So in all of the examples, the, the one that changes the least is the middle school. But the options, one just is a straight flip of high school elementary levels. And then the others are variations on a theme based on that conversation we had at the last task force meeting. Okay. So I'll send them out in the morning. Good. Thank you. Is that, is that flip really the, are there any other barriers that stand in the way from making an adjustment, assuming we can work the transportation piece out? Well, I think I would call one of the barriers and appetite of people to accept that particular one. Because if, if we were to flip, the question or the worry becomes how early will elementary students need to be out waiting for the bus? And to know exactly what that would be, that's why we do the, the, um, the study. Elementary runs are shorter than high school runs. So maybe it's not as early as our high school kids are out, but that's the kind of help that we need from someone who can look at all of our data. Something like like high school after school activities. Oh yes. Is that is that affected by the sort of a flip of time? <coughs> Absolutely. So when can practices start? When can students be released to get to games that are away? Um, is okay. there enough light in the fall for for teams to finish their practice slash games if we're not on um, lit fields. There's lots and lots of pluses and minuses. Barbara. Those are variables, but we have examples. Schenectady is on this late start time, and they still do all their sports. They still do all their after-school activities. They still send kids to both seas. So to me, if we're, there's a will, there's a way, and other schools you know, have managed to achieve it. So I, I just don't see any insurmountable barriers, but things that just have to be worked out in a desire, in a lot of education that we know this is good for kids. It's unmistakably good for kids. So mm -hmm. um, it, there's going to be a lot of education, but right. you have to make a decision and you know, hopefully base it on some realistic mm -hmm. facts. I, I just hate for us to go down the path do the study and then realize we can't change anything. <laughs> but you, <laughs> and, can. you know that there's other barrier that there's other barriers that are insurmountable along the way that we can we can identify now and say here's how we get past this. Here's how we get past you know sporting schedules and all of that. That doesn't assume I don't I assume that doesn't cost us anything to figure that out. But bringing somebody in to do to, to examine our transportation options, mm -hmm. we're we're going to pay for that. And I don't want to pay for something at the end. We couldn't have done anyway, but I just that's why I asked. Right. It's on my mind. The the transportation is the heaviest lift mm -hmm. for sure. sure. Um, we had at our last meeting. I mean, uh, Damien isn't here tonight, but he was the person who led the group that put together these turned out to be seven options, and we brought the team in to review them once and then we did it again with mm -hmm. um, Danielle joined us and Neil was there who and they were able to give us some of the granular concerns from a transportation point of view but there's just a lot more that needs to go into that mm -hmm. and the the silver lining in all of this and this came out of our conversation with the gentleman from the consulting firm is that um, they have to look at our whole system in order to do this and in so doing we may find some efficiencies that we haven't found before so while we're you know fronting some resources here if we can find some even minor um, efficiencies along the way we're going to make up that expense in no time flat because of how expensive transportation is so that could be the silver lining regardless of where we land with all of this the um, the firm was very impressive. I don't know what you thought, Neil, but they've done this work with many, many districts around the country. And then I know they're also working with Bethlehem. They work with Syosset. They work with a number of schools down in Long Island. 
and so they're familiar with the work. It's not like they have to figure it out all over again. So, thank you. Sure. To go back to did I school. skip graduation? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I did. Okay, how <coughs> did I do that? Um, Mr. Piscatelli is not here tonight. He had a family uh, obligation, but I wish he were because it was his first graduation as our high school principal, and I thought he did an amazing job, um, not only in the ceremony itself, but in the thousands of things that lead up to putting together um, an event such as that, working with his, his team in the office and the other administrators and working with the students to help them understand that this is a dignified and joyous occasion and how do you strike that balance and in my humble opinion that balance was struck the best on Saturday that I've seen um, since we've been here. Mm -hmm. So I want to just give him high praise for his leadership in putting together that experience. I, I have heard nothing but positive feedback from parents and kids. And it, mo it moved quickly, it didn't, dra but it wasn't like anything was rushing to get anything done. <coughs> about readers, the recognition, yes. the speeches were incredibly good. The, um, every name was heard. I think they waited. So if there had to be a big, you know, celebration in, in the um, <laughs> audience, that was great. And we waited. Until and there were. There were. And there were. <laughs> but we waited until um, it calmed down so the next person's name could be heard. And I know families really very much appreciate that. Mm. So there's a lot of work that goes into it, and I just want to um, thank and congratulate and recognize everyone who played a part. Um, Andy Maycock, who's working with us tonight, and uh, Kathleen Elliger with the band, and um, you know, just everyone who was a part of it. So, and all of you who could come. Mm -hmm. it was a, it was and having it earlier on Saturday. <laughs> was awesome. And that's our place now, right? Yes. I think if Very uh, good. another district wants to return, I think the 4 o'clock slot is now open. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just add a couple things on that? That I, uh, my wife and I were out in the audience, oh, nice. and which was kind of a neat perspective. And you guys all looked fantastic up on the stage with your robes, especially Ben. <laughs> that was that was some kind of robe there. Um, but uh, you know, we just noticed that uh, nobody was leaving. I mean, everybody stayed. I think everybody really enjoyed the music. Uh, the the students who did the Star Spangled Banner that was amazing. It sounded so great all throughout the the auditorium and I just wanted to mention Chris Gockley who I don't know mm -hmm. if he was the keynote speaker if that's the right right uh, term but uh, he was great he just did a great job he's a great guy if you don't know him visit the high school and meet him he's mm -hmm. just a tremendous guy tremendous individual he had a, a line his big applause line was get your head out of your phones which got a big <laughs> round of applause from people. I think that resonated from the well. audience. Now. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And and in fact, you could see people kind of put their phone in their pocket very <laughs> casually. But uh, he also sang some Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and oh. that just takes big guts. <laughs> so he he's a good guy. He did a great job, and it was a really it was a really nice morning. All right, and last. Uh, for, for me, um, we just received the um, budget vote and election exit survey results, and I attached them to your materials on Friday. Uh, I believe they're uploaded to the um, website right now. I honestly forgot to look before we came down here, but if they're not there today, they will be there tomorrow. So for your reading pleasure, it's about 88 pages long with a lot of information there. And that's all I have. Okay. Next, board present information. First, we have the NISBA reference dates and the resolution kit. Are there any questions, comments? No, Barb? I don't know if there was any appetite on the part of the board to submit a resolution um, to eliminate the three hour giveaway for people to vote on election day that under the last um, budget, you know, that came out that we're now required to do. I mean, it is so bizarre and insane. Um, could we at least think about it? In other words, just asking NISBA to lobby against having an entity like a school district 
have to give people three hours off to go vote when the polls are open from what eight in the morning until nine at night so um, can you just explain that <coughs> Kelly you look like you want to know what that's about yeah so just, but we can just at least think about think it. about that okay it, isn't that already NISPA's position yeah I, I I know they put out a statement now whether it's like an official position I guess we could call and ask mm -hmm. but I mean it's, it's just nuts and they wouldn't take it up even at the close of the legislature, even after NISBA and tons of people, you know, said, you know, why would you do something like this? Okay, we can so check we can it out. follow up on that. Yeah. Everybody wants to think about that resolution, and then the next, uh, the Board of Ed self evaluation form, the blank meeting self evaluation. Are there comments or questions about this? This came from communications, right? Yeah, uh, we just wanted to um, bring this out at the beginning of the year again to just, um, you know, see if there are any further comments. We've been using it for a few months now, and, uh, you know, it's our organizational meeting, so, you know, maybe just to look it over again. Ben, do you mind telling Kelly what, what we do with that? Yeah. Um, so at the end of every meeting, we fill this out essentially um, and usually if you agree you just go through we, we recently added this box at the top that just because we want everyone to participate and, and and fill it out and so maybe 10 check marks is too much but <coughs> one check mark you can do and then if you disagree you can put you know like a comment in um, that will help us these get posted on the Friday portal after a meeting so that we can go look and see what people thought and every once in a while the communications committee talks about it to see if there's problems that are consistent. Thank you, Ben. Any other questions or comments? Next, we'll move to action items, but first I think we need to have Gloria uh, swear in before we can vote. I don't know if she can hear me. We need to swear you in. Do you have your statement? Yes, I did open it up. Okay. Yep, go ahead. I do so now to swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will take to discharge the duties of the office of board member according to the best of my abilities. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so first, uh, under action, curriculum and instruction. I guess I'm sitting in for Damien, Damien again. A, a second time. <laughs> um, these are two books that were before the board um, in June that are now up for action. The first is Brave by Svetlana Chinkova for use in language arts in grade seven. And the second is Kindred by Octavia Butler, adapted by Damien Duff Duffy and John Jennings for, the use in, for use in SUPA English. So we might make a motion, Ben? I make a motion to approve the textbooks. Christine, second. Any questions or comments about the books, Ben? Yeah, I just wanted to um, note that they were um, very interesting. They're, they're both graphic novels. Um, the one for seventh grade um, is about bullying, and um, and the kid imagines he's in a video game. So some of the illustrations are. Um, of him in the school day, and then part of the illustration is, you know, I've advanced to the next level, which is math class, you know, <laughs> and um, and it's going to get tougher. Um, and then the, the other books are really good too. I, I appreciate that they're in a graphic novel format. Uh, it acknowledges that there's more than one form of literacy out there. Yeah, so. it's interesting. <laughs> I look at kind of the graphic novels don't appeal to me at first, but. You're right, that's where we are right now for a lot of kids. Okay, any other questions or comments? Are you all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes nine, nine nothing, nine zero. Um, next, school business. Neil? Thank you. Uh, first this evening is a resolution to approve the intermunicipal agreement with Crossstar 3 to provide internal auditing services for the 2019 20 school year as recommended by the Audit Committee. Does someone want to make a motion, Barb? 
Second? Tim? Questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9-0. Uh, next is a resolution to approve the appointment of, of the agreement with Gervin and Flazo to provide special education legal services for the period beginning July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Can I have a motion? Christine? Judy, second? Questions or comments about the agreement? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9-0. Next is a resolution to approve agreements uh, for special education service providers on authorized superintendent of schools to execute the agreements. The four agreements are with the Charlton School, the Northeast Associates in Rehabilitation, Visual Eyes, and Wildwood School. You have a motion? Barb? Someone one second? Tim? Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9-0. Uh, next is a recommendation to approve the agreement with CSR to provide architectural and engineering services for the 2019 capital construction project. Can I have a motion? Judy? Christine, second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9-0. Uh, next is the approval of the agreement with Turner Construction Company to provide construction management services for the 2019 capital construction project. Can I have a motion? Christine? Second. Barb? Questions or comments? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9-0. We have a bid award for radon mitigation construction services, and the recommendation is to approve um, that the bid award go to John W. Danforth Company, the low bidder meeting specifications for $141,300. Can I have a motion? Judy, second, Ben. Comments, questions? This is the one, Neil, that we're going to try and, and get down to what we yes, had so authorized. Yes, th this was a firm, and it's a little over budget at this point, about $11,000 over our, our current budget. Uh, we have talked with uh, Michael Andrews from CSR, Cliff Nooney, who's here tonight, has been involved as well. We believe there's an opportunity to do some value engineering as part of this uh, project, which is sitting down with the contractor and his subcontractors, as we found out. He's got subcontractors that are involved in this as well and looking for ways that we can um, more efficiently either find alternative ways to do things, use alternative materials, um, things like that, so that we can identify areas where we may be able to get the same product but at a lower cost in some ways. So we're still going to look to do that process. If we're successful in doing so, we'll be back with what's called a deduct change order, which will change the uh, contract amount that was just approved and lower it by whatever amount we negotiate uh, that change for. And it's work that has to be done, right? It's work that has to be done. So this is a radon mitigation uh, project here at the high school. So we have elevated levels of radon gas that was discovered through testing. Uh, we need to make some improvements in our mechanical systems, our ventilation systems, and we need to be in spaces um, that we have access to during the summer, but we won't during the school year. So we need to complete this project over the summer. It was part of what the voters authorized with the May vote, so that was our funding source. Mm -hmm. Worked quickly through the process with the State Education Department to get that approved. We did the bid as soon as we could, all trying to time out to this meeting. We only had the bid open, open for about two weeks for uh, for proposals to be received, so we're, we're and that's this summer. This summer, so we're ready to. And when do they hope to start? I'm yeah. Wondering. Pardon. When do they hope to start the work? Um, I would say as soon as we award the bid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. You're not testing some of your building, you're open, you get an inaccurate reading. So mm -hmm. the goal is, you know, if it did even stretch in October, we're still okay because I won't 
pull the trigger on testing until we get probably later November, early December. And is um, <coughs> this the end of it, or are we going to continue to have, you know, if, if, if we, no, I, if we get these down to acceptable levels, have we tested everything then, or do we have to continually we test? We continue to test. We will probably go on a two-year test schedule. Okay. To make sure. Because, I mean, soil conditions can change. I mean, it could come up, pick up in a different area. Oh. No, well, I, th that's, I figured, but I just. It will also extend out to Altamont Farnsworth. So Altamont Farnsworth and high school will have on a two-year testing schedule. Did and, and honestly, again, the, the testing in the grand scheme of things is relatively inexpensive. <laughs> Mitigation now. Yeah. Where so this, this should hopefully be the last big chunk. Hopefully, I said. I, I'll go with hopefully, yes. I was, I was hoping the last time this was the last chunk. <laughs> well, he said we can't, yeah, yeah, I, I can't no. stay here and guarantee anything. Like right. Said, so conditions change, things settle, you know, we could get a, you know, a crack in a tunnel or something to where there was an issue. So mm -hmm. I'm very hopeful that this is our last go around, but I cannot guarantee that. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> um, can I ask how many companies we solicited for proposals? I don't know if I know the answer to that one. <laughs> it, it actually kind of goes out on a portal, then, you know, so they'll, they'll push it out to, uh, it's like an online system, and then we can actually see who looked at it, and I think a total of four companies actually looked at the job, but only two uh, picked up and submitted bids on the job. Okay. So, but it, it's actually a pretty cool system because you can actually see who actually asked for the documents and, and who doesn't. Um, and then I even though I asked Michael to solicit a couple vendors that we had worked with in the past as well to see if they would be interested. Mm -hmm. This is, it was just with the timing and being as part of our regular budget, we're just not in a good bid cycle right now to try to go out and put something out for bid in June uh, to be completed in July and August. Right. Okay. Just not, most people already have those that are out for the And, you know, we don't get any extra state aid for the, we get it just in the regular state aid package. Wasn't yeah, there well, something at some point where they were going to provide more state aid, mm -hmm. or is that just me dreaming? Um, no, building aid has been maintained, so this project would be eligible for building aid. Building aid, okay. Other questions? <clears throat> okay, so all in favor for the radon mitigation bid award? Aye. 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 Passes 9-0. Uh, next, we have a resolution to approve, approve phase one of the proposal from school bus consultants to provide a school start time transportation analysis. And that was what we talked about when we just talked about a little while ago. Can I have a motion? Judy? Ben, second? Questions or comments for this bell time study proposal? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9-0. Uh, next we have a resolution to approve a number of bids related to our cafeteria program. Uh, they are baked goods, cafeteria materials and supplies, fresh bread, fresh pizza, for the process commodities, groceries, ice cream, and snacks. Can I have a motion for the lunch bid awards? Barb? Second? Christine? Questions or comments? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9-0. Then finally this evening, we have a donation, and that's from the Westmere Elementary School PTA for the purchase of new playground equipment. Can we have a motion to accept the donation? Judy? Second, Ben? Questions or comments? How much it was for? What did they get? Uh, several thousand dollars. I'm going to ask Cliff <laughs> While he's here, I might as well make him work a little bit. <coughs> Actually, a lot of this fundraising was done through Jen Romano. I mean, she has come and spoken here at yep. the board. She actually like, sold her toy collection. And uh, one of her kids' birthday party, the twins, it was all donations uh, to the uh, playground equipment. So huh. we were able to get 
it's called like a 10 spin. It's the same uh, spinner thing like we put in pine bush last year where you have another adaptive swing going in and probably like another buddy bench going in through donations. That's great. The rolls are just shy of $4,000 total. Oh, that's awesome. So. Very nice. Yeah, nice job, Westmere. What? Is Gloria, did Gloria say something? No, she did not. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> all in favor of accepting the donation? Aye. 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 Did she say it? Oh, okay, <laughs> passes 9-0. Uh, next, superintendent action, Dr. Okay. Wiles. Thank you. My first item is uh, annual plans that are up for appro approval. This includes our SAVE plan, that's our safety plan, as well as our professional development plan. Both of these came before the board as information on June 11th. Can I have a motion to approve the, the plans, project SAVE and professional development? Christine? Second, Ben? Questions or comments? Ben. I was glad to see the incorporation of the thought exchange results into mm -hmm. our goals for professional development. <coughs> it worked great. It really did. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Are all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9 0. Uh, my next item is actually two items. Would you like to do them together or separately? Mm -hmm. Contract ratifications Separate. for Gilderland Office Workers Association and for Gilderland Technology Personnel Association. You want to do it separate, Barb? Either way. <laughs> okay, we can keep it separate. Separately, but. Okay, the first one is with the Gilderland Office Workers Association. Be it resolved that the Board of Education authorizes the Superintendent of Schools, Marie Wiles, to execute the proposed memorandum of agreement between the Gilderland Central School District and the Gilderland Office Workers Association for the Gilderland Central School District for the duration of the collective bargaining agreement, July 1, 2019 to June 30th, 2022. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9-0. Thank you. And the second is uh, agreement with the Gilderland Technology Personnel Association. Be it resolved that the Board of Education authorizes the Superintendent of Schools, Marie Wiles, to execute the proposed memorandum of agreement between the Gilderland Central School District and the Gilderland Technology Personnel Association of the Gilderland Central School District for the duration of the collective bargaining agreement July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2022. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9-0. And my last item is an additional memorandum of agreement, um, be it resolved that the Board of Education authorizes the Superintendent of Schools, Marie Wiles, to execute the proposed memorandum of agreement between the Gilderland Central School District and the Gilderland Teachers Association and Colleen Ryan. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, a motion? Tim, second, Judy, questions or comments? The memorandum. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9 0. Uh, next, board present action. The first is the establishment of voter registration dates and locations for 2020. Wow. Uh, do I have to read all of this? Worry. Would it be better too? Yeah, we generally Okay. Um, all right, so let me read this establishment. Whereas the Gilderland Central School District Board of Education is required to set by resolution the time and location of personal voter registration dates to be held not more than 14 days nor less than five days before the annual vote and election. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education, pursuant to applicable law, establishes May 7th, May 11th, and May 12th, 2020, from 8.30 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. at the following locations, Altamont Elementary School, Gilderland Elementary School, Linwood Elementary School, Westmere Elementary School, and Pinebush Elementary School for personal registration for said annual vote and election. Additionally, any person otherwise entitled to vote at said annual vote and election may register at the Gilderland Central School District offices, 8 School Road, Gilderland Center, New York, on May 7th, May 11th and May 12th, 2020, between the hours of 8.30 and 4.30 p.m. 
Make the motion. Motion, do we have a second? Christine? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 9-0. Next, um, superintendent's compensation for 2019-20. Uh, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Gildren Central School District. We need to go. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Have to come back. To okay, we'll come back to this. Sorry. Um, next, we have a, a whole bunch of policies. Um, someone want to make a motion? Christine, Barb, second. Questions or comments? Seema, could we separate out policy 4532 school volunteers? Yes. And vote on it separately. That and the exhibit two, or just the policy? Uh, just the policy. policy. To vote on it separately, or to move it? To vote on it separately. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I have a comment about the volunteer one. Um, I don't know if, if has everybody taken time to look at it. I don't want to rush that through because it's such a big change in the way we have volunteers in schools. And I know Kelly's new. There's a little bit of a change. I don't know how other people feel. I may need to, I remember hearing you guys discuss it a little bit last time, but I haven't actually dug into it. Is it this is the one where they had to we require some sort of extra vetting of, I don't really There's, there's an application. There's an application form for them to fill out you now. It's held on file? Yes, at each building. Barb, did you want to say anything else about that? Oh, no, this has been vetted by all the administrators, and um, they all seem very comfortable with it. So, good to go. It, it's been circulated through the PTAs, um. and then it went back through all the teacher groups. Okay. In May and June, and they did provide some feedback. You saw it highlighted. Um, I think I don't know if it was Friday's update or the Friday before. Yeah, my my, my comments relate to those latest changes uh, it seemed like the policy went through a more of a centralization um, through those changes um, for example the principal now has to approve um, the application rather than just review it and um, the authorization to have direct contact with students has to come from the building principal rather than a teacher um, and so to that particular point, um, some language that was added was that volunteers might be chaperoning field trips. So this, this policy now covers parents volunteering to chaperone field trips. Uh, if that's the case, then it might be difficult to get the building principal to sign off on a parent walking a few kids to the bathroom or something on a field trip, right? So. Um, I just feel like some of those changes might have might make this even more onerous than it was already, and um, I would want to change the policy back to say no volunteer shall be permitted to have unsupervised direct contact with students unless otherwise authorized, and leave it at that, without requiring the authorization to come from principal. the building principal. I I just I think in the application process. When the super where, yeah, the superintendent when the building principal signs off on it, I, I I think I'd just rather see that if there's a restriction that the the building principal is going to put, that that's where that's at the point where we identify that restriction. Otherwise, like having all these different call outs for different elements, I think is is onerous. I'd rather have that identified in the in the front end to say that they have to <coughs> where as a volunteer now is welcome to volunteer in the classroom, but the restriction is he's not allowed to walk kids down the hallway it says or designee so can it be the teacher then the teacher could be designated as the person to authorize it well then why even put that there those were these were all recommendations that came from faculty um, the chaperoning piece came in because the um, policy never exactly defined what a volunteer is and so many teachers looked at the volunteers who chaperone field trips as a significant body of people who help them out during the course of the year some grades more than others depending on the activities so that was a teacher recommendation to include chaperones in here and then same thing with the um, 
unless otherwise authorized, the question became by who. And so that's where those changes came from. And I think with the intent of making it easier for teachers to, to manage and know what the expectations are. Okay, but does the, does the teacher expect to not be able to say, hey, can you take this kid out in the hallway without <coughs> approval of Alan Lockwood or Chris Anita, you know? So, um, or does, are they thinking kind of like what Sean's thinking in that when the building principal reviews and approves the application, now he's authorized? Uh, I, I just, I don't get that one. And, um, it limits your use of volunteers if you have to run and get approval from the building principal in the middle of an activity. Or who would the designee be? Because it's just or designee. Right, his secretary. Well, for example, and again, this is feedback that came from staff, and I got it in writing afterwards, so I wasn't a part of the conversation. But an example that came up a lot was around mask. So there are the production, sorry, Kelly, I'm going to try to explain the mask production at the Farns, at Farnsworth Middle School that involves hundreds of volunteers, some of whom are in the backstage helping kids change and so on. And so there is a certain level of we need volunteers to help because there's no way we have enough staff, employees to do that. So the principal could designate the person who runs mask to say these 10 people are you know good to go in this particular role but it's gonna it's gonna look different in all the various ways this unfolds in a given building or a given classroom so it's hard to capture everything in a single policy that's kind of where we are. what if we're in, instead of that no volunteer be permitted to have unsupervised direct contact what if we sort of flip that around and said the building principal um, is authorized to restrict unsupervised direct contact with students so it's allowed unless restricted by virtue of the volunteer policy saying the same thing right what would a principal restrict like if he's going to restrict access that's I, significantly why would he even allow them to be a volunteer I, to begin with? That, that would be my thought <laughs> entirely. But I, for some reason it's in for some reason somebody wanted this in here and Well, it could be that the volunteer in question has seven hundred and fifty hours of volunteer service under his belt and they don't want to just say scram. Um, they might want to put restrictions on it instead. Just hypothetically. <laughs> And then they do say scram. They so. see so you want to vote on this separately? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, could we not okay. work to clarify that? Uh, Sean may be onto something. I just, I mean, if, 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 if <coughs> there's a reason why it's in there, and to Kelly's point, then why would we have a volunteer who we wouldn't have comfortable with students? If somebody wants it in there, then let's keep it in there, but let's flip it around to authorize the building principal to restrict unsupervised direct contact. Now, does it does it have to be just the building principal to take the mask thing? Could it? <clears throat> well, that's where the designee thing part comes in, I think. But in no. this case, the, the the volunteer would be able to have unsupervised direct contact right. through the application process. But if there was a reason that the building principal thought that that was not appropriate, mm -hmm. and the building principal puts the brakes on that, otherwise it's it's assumed to be allowed. Yeah, I would like that a lot better than what we have there. How about you, Ben? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Do you want to add on to that? Um, we're going to, no, we're going to flip it. Just change it? Okay. So how should it read? No volunteer shall, shall be permitted? Yeah. No. The, the, building the building principal shall be permitted to restrict okay. unsupervised direct contact with students. Period. Period. Mm -hmm. Does someone have that? Uh, again, I, I don't like, I actually don't like that just because it, it again, centralizes the process. So. If the teacher doesn't want, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, if the volunteer's there in the teacher's classroom and the teacher doesn't want, like, I don't, you know, I, I don't think that the building principal needs to be involved in this kind of minute decision that might or may not arise. 
I mean, I think building principal or designee can be any person that they designate. It can be the classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. I just want to know how often do volunteers have unsupervised direct contact with students. I know the example that you gave, but generally if somebody comes in the classroom to volunteer, it's so it's rare. So I would Here want those people to be looked at closely. If you're going to be unsupervised with students, somebody should be signing off on that. I don't think mm -hmm. it should be presumed that anybody can do it unless we say otherwise. So I kind of prefer the language that's before us. Tim brought up an example in the committee about so you have volunteers, and they take students out into the, into the pond. Oh, yeah. And, and are they, is that considered supervised? Especially mm -hmm. since they're on camera mm -hmm. in those situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is unsupervised? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. but, and also, reading this policy, <coughs> what do people think supervised means, right? Because if the teacher says, yes, you can take the kid out, and we think that that means supervised, but no one else does. I mean, that, that doesn't matter. Um, we kind of have to look at these in terms of what would someone just reading through this kind of get the impression of what they're allowed to do because there's a big chilling factor in, you know, in reading policies and thinking that you don't have rights that you have. Um, you know, again, my suggestion was just to delete the building principle from that sentence. Um, you know, I. I I'm okay with volunteers um, in other than so special circumstances not having unsupervised direct contact um, but I think that the teacher should be able to say uh, uh, yeah sure take 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 those four out into the hallway and uh, come back in ten minutes you know so but the way it's written here would allow that right or, or designee mm -hmm. if I the building like principal designates every teacher with a volunteer in their classroom I, I, and in that case, why is that there? So there's someone who's authorizing it. Yeah. A, a district employee, an agent of the district. When I was going to do EMC this year, this past year, I had to draft a memorandum of understanding between me, Mike Piscatelli, Bernie Bott, to have unsupervised direct contact with students. I drafted a memorandum of understanding. So what this policy looks like to me now is that's kind of the process people have to go through because they got to get building principal approval before they can have unsupervised direct contact with students. Um, I want this to be as easy as possible while being as safe as possible and um, you know we're already concerned about these extra requirements. Um, I don't know why we need to make it harder. Do we trust our teachers to give authority, or don't we? It could have been the teachers that asked for the building principal to be the one that signs off on it. I don't. I don't. That's what I. I that's the unknown to me. Some teachers did. <clears throat> they can not give authority, you know, but. Is Kristen your question? Sure. You seem more comfortable with what's here. Mm -hmm. Can it be fluffed out a little bit more to put in classroom teacher or? I, I think this covers it. Designee can be anybody who the building principal designates. Mm -hmm. That could be a teacher. That could be an assistant in the room. But I would want, I think when you're talking about unsupervised direct contact with students, you want to be extra cautious. I'm comfortable with this language here and not the alternatives presented. Same, same with me, especially if it was recommended by the faculty and staff. And I, I'm, Kelly raised a good point. It's just, then why are we letting people into the school if we're not comfortable with, with something like walking students down the hallway? You might have a parent that you're comfortable being in the classroom because you want them to be there to observe something that their student is excited about, but it's not apparent that I would want my child being walked to the bathroom. Right. An it observer kind of, is not a volunteer. It gives you some flexibility in, in who can come in. You can come in and volunteer in the classroom in a big group with other adults there. I think it gives you more flexibility that way. Not every adult that comes in this building would you probably want unsupervised direct contact with a student. 
This yep. doesn't apply to all adults in the building. This is volunteers. Right. There's a whole other policy for visitors. Okay, well, what I'm saying is I'm comfortable with this as it's written. I think it gives us enough flexibility. I think it gives the principal the flexibility to designate a classroom teacher or somebody else who maybe is more familiar with the situation to make these decisions, but I don't think it's too arduous of a policy the way that it's written. And that it was a recommendation and it was reviewed by all these other stakeholder groups. So all I'm saying is I'm comfortable with this, this language that's here now. My uncomfortableness with designee is can we clarify that it's the building principal that names the designee? Because designee is just sort of laying out there by itself. So who's, who's going to name the designee? At least clarify it you by can, saying the building yeah. principal or his or her des, you know, designee. I think that's fine. That's, that's, fine. that's how I was interpreting it anyway. Mm -hmm. If you want to add that piece, yep. Okay. Oh, go ahead. But moving over to the form. You know, so I'm wondering, so what's the process here, right? We have a policy, and now what's the procedure? The procedure is to fill out an application for volunteers. But how do we know, you know, there's nothing on here, once I see that application for volunteers, that indicates to me that anybody's been approved to be into the building. Is there a, is there, is there a second procedure or something else that is attached to this? You know, just because I fill this out, how do I, how, what's the backup? When somebody asks the question, well, you have a policy that says that Sean McGuire you know, uh, had to apply to be a volunteer to be in the building. He filled out an application, but I don't see anything here that says he was authorized to be there. That's why the policy, the teachers actually asked to have uh, that the application be uh, reviewed and approved by the super, uh, by the building principal. So I would imagine there would be some okay in the corner once it's reviewed. But there isn't one and there isn't there's, there's, we there's could add a line for a well then we need you know that needs to be done before we ap approve the the application mm -hmm. in my book. I mean Yeah, that's a good point. Well the each building principal shall be responsible for maintaining maintaining a current and complete record of all active volunteers. I mean if if there's access to that list then we would conceivably we would know who was who was approved or not. And, you know, in the case of somebody who checks yes on, they've been convicted of a, of a misdemeanor. Um, you have to provide explanations with details and separate pieces of paper. Who makes that call, whether or not that misdemeanor elevated to a level that somebody should not be in the school building? I think the building principal. Yeah, the building principal would. That's how it she goes now. probably call over. <coughs> talk with us and we might reach out to Jeff. I mean, depending on what it was, we would have to do some homework before signing off. I mean, that's more information than we get now if they come in to volunteer. With, it's just the license. This would be the license plus the application. And so they're signing off saying that they, you know, are forthcoming with all of this information. Okay, so do you want to, oh, go ahead, Barb, sorry. In that form, we could just add, add a line, you know, approved by whatever the building principal that has gone over it. Or they could designate their secretary to, you know, go through the applications. And that's why I said, you know, to flip the policy to say that unless otherwise restricted by the principal, that they can, you know, have unsupervised access because at that point that's where I want the principal to stop and say mm -hmm. sign the application and say with limitations or without limitations because that's the point where I want them to to vet that out and make that decision like the unsupervised um, access to students should be the exception not the rule for volunteers the vast majority of volunteer activities should be supervised by a school employee but there are some exceptions where it wouldn't make sense. So I think the, the wording that you're describing would make it sound like most volunteer work is okay to be done in an unsupervised setting. But I, I think that's the opposite of what we're trying to communicate. Because the reality is, is the vast majority of this volunteer work happens in the classroom side by side with the teacher or on, a way, on their way to a field trip somewhere. 
Well, and that's why I want to front load it. Because if that is the case, then it can easily, in, in the approval process, it can be improved and it can be said, you know, with limitations, you know, supervised. And then we're, then it's pretty clear as to what it is. I don't know. I, I, the, the, think of the, the reverse, right, where we have this policy and somebody does not adhere to it and a child is harmed. Or what about if you keep it the way it is but have the clarification made up front when the application is put in? Authorized to be unsupervised. I, I'd that be okay. Would be the then I would, yeah. like then I would be okay said. with that. But at least you're making that determination at the time of. Mm -hmm. But some of these decisions might be made on the fly too. Yeah. Right. I don't. Yeah. I don't think. Right. You don't need it until you need time. it. So. Right. The, te the teacher. You know, if you say the teacher has the ability to make this, the teacher doesn't have access to this information to this application form necessarily, right? But, but, yeah. Yes, I can. Yep. Yeah. So if the teacher doesn't have access to this form, then all this information that was provided by the volunteer to the principal for the vetting process, mm -hmm. and the teacher says, you know, I'm I'm, I'm designated. It's okay. You can you know take the kids into the hallway. But there was something there, there was there was an issue we've totally missed it we've totally missed it yeah, but if there was an issue we probably wouldn't have approved them <clears throat> yeah like if there was an issue that prevented them from going out into the hallway with kids we wouldn't have let them in that school right but but we're also saying the opposite that there may be a, there may be a parent or a guardian or a family member who's come to the school who you're okay with them being in the classroom working with the students, but you're not okay going in, into the hallway to... Well, I think it'd be so rare. This would give us that flexibility to say that we don't authorize yeah. that. Well, I, I'm okay moving on with it, but that's... So those are my objections. I just, I just, you know, or, or, or my, my concerns. I mean, <laughs> I, I... Parp. Can we at least then amend it, you know, to his or her <coughs> designee? To so her, her, clarify that a little bit more. The building principal or her, his designee? His or her designee. Yeah. Designee. And also to have a uh, amend this for the application form to have an approval signature that has been actually been for reviewed. the building from the building principal yeah at the bottom mm -hmm. okay so can we make the motion with the amendments and okay um, you want to vote on this separately the volunteers policy so we'll vote on that first since we just talked about that someone want to make a motion for the volunteers policy uh, with the amended change. So it should say building principal or his or her designee. Ben? Moved. Second? Tim? Any other questions or comments? I, I, the school doesn't start till September. Actually, we have summer school going on right now and there is interest in having volunteers. I, I think it needs more work, so I, I don't think I think that, um, you know, I, I appreciate the work that has, the policy committee has done, but I think that this board has a responsibility to deliberate these issues and, and just to say that the, you know, a committee has reviewed it and everybody else has weighed in, you know, we have the final say in it, so. What if we approved it now and then in the fall, you know, when, so that we can get through the summer school? <laughs> because we don't have another meeting anyway until mm -hmm. after that. And then in the fall, we could look at it again if, if it seems like it's not working or we're not comfortable. Well, I, I'm, I'm, if everybody else was comfortable with it, I guess I'm one paranoid <laughs> member of the board here, <laughs> you know, raising concern. But um, we, yeah, I think it needs more. I think it needs a little bit more work, but it, it's, it's hard to it, it anticipate all of the varieties of scenarios that could occur. We so. spent months on it and yeah. everybody's looked at it. Our, what I was just going to say is <clears> that, you know, we've had this on the table at least nine months. And you know, it's gone through many revisions and a lot of input, and we were so careful to mm -hmm. contact teachers, administrators, PTAs, and you know, this was the final result. And we've made a few, you know, modifications ourselves. So, even though I had difficulty even agreeing to do something like this because I thought it was sort of a barrier, um, you know, everybody's demonstrated a need that they they wanted it, and I think I think we put a lot of work into it, and a lot of people have. And we can always amend this. If something isn't working, we, we can change it. Mm -hmm. there, there's no hardship in doing that at all. <clears throat> but I'm comfortable with what we've come up with, you know, with the minor changes that we've made. And as I said, it, any of these policies are always open for discussion at a future meeting. Right. So, right. you know, feel comfortable with that, really. Kim? And we also might get a test case now if it's being used in right. the summer. Mm -hmm. 
And so then we can get that information, bring it back to policy, mm -hmm. and uh, discuss it one more time there. Right. Sounds good. So all in favor of the school volunteers policy with the small amended change? All in favor? Aye. 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 It passes 9-0. No. no, opposed. Oh, I'm sorry. All, uh, all opposed? That is and So passes 8-1. <clears throat> Can we look at the other policies together? Is anybody else mm -hmm. questions? Or we'll those together unless somebody has a, any a concerns? Sean? I'll make the motion to approve the balance of the policies. Okay. I have a second. Judy? Questions or comments about the other policies besides D? Just want to make sure to note the amended change on the exhibit. The exhibit, yeah. Okay, so letter E should have a line for the principal signature at the bottom for approval. Any other questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? That passes 9 0. Oh, and the last thing in the agenda, um, the recommendation to suspend the use of a handbook for better school board operating procedures. I think it was brought up by several people that there, had, there were concerns about the way um, the handbook was written and how it was being used. And instead of using it or getting rid of it, um, I think the recommendation was to make a suspension of it until there's an agreed upon handbook. I uh, have a motion for changing the hand or suspending the handbook barb oh my god a second i'll second tim any questions or comments <clears throat> sean you said there were people there were folks that were um had some challenges and i'll be one of the people that that has a, a some challenges with the handbook since i got on the board i think there's been far too many questions and answers provided to me by the handbook so um i, I think it's probably hindered us more than it's helped us from my observation over the past year one of the things I've noticed is that um, we've asked, or Gloria, I, th I think, has had said, you know, we'd like to talk about this at the next meeting, you know, read through it, if there are suggestions, and there never were. I'm not sure if people were reading it or just assumed it was okay, but it's kind of a disappointment that it gets to this stage, and we've gone through the whole thing, and now there's a recommendation to suspend the use of the handbook. And I, I don't agree with it, I guess. I, I think we, we've had, I hate to say chances, but we've, we've had the opportunity all along to make recommendations. It's not like we were said, here's the handbook, deal with it. We were given the opportunity, uh, you know, said we're going to talk about this, and, and there was never really any discussion as far as I can remember. I, I understand. Judy, your point, and I read through all of those sections and thought about them and made comments and provided feedback, which was incorporated. But I think last year was our first year using it, and we ran into a few issues that I don't think we would have caught by just reading it, but it's more of now that we've implemented it, we've recognized that there's some challenges. That's from my perspective. Okay, as yeah. Why I had concerns about it. I, I'm not sure everybody that. read it, I, I guess. And, and so when you don't agree with something, suddenly to say it. Let's spend the use of the whole thing, I think. Gloria? Can someone uh, explain to me what the challenges specifically are that have come up that have been not addressed? That's Some of the discussions I've heard were about not following what, we, what was written in the handbook. For example, um, a couple people have mentioned the like the email policy, like how emails are handled uh, when when the whole board is sent an email, and so it looks like it wasn't, you know, we weren't really following the policy. So I think the idea was let's review, you know, what we're actually doing, and you know, make the pol or make the handbook follow what we're doing. In fact, um, I mean, this began two and a half years ago. This has been a long process. Um, as I know you pointed out, and I'm sure other people on the board remember. Um, and we have to go back and remember what the purpose of all this was. It was to be more explicit and to make more formal uh, what we were about and what the best practices were. So over two and a half years, the 
committee looked at uh, recommendations from the New York State School Boards Association and from members of our own board, trying to put together a manual that would help not only us, but also the members uh, hit on the best practices and, and uh, use those best practices. And I, I have to disagree because I think the handbook is very helpful with regard to the email. We were able to uh, um, you know, define the whole, uh, when, when someone gets an email from a parent or gets an email from a staff member or whatever, how it should be approved. I think we felt very good about how that went this year, that we didn't get, uh, you know, people writing back, oh, nobody answered me. I mean, things, things were positively resolved and under the new process. And also the public comment section of the meeting where we designated in the handbook that we needed to follow up on that and make sure that uh, a couple of persons spoke. And I think that was a positive thing. And I think one of the things that we were going to do this year, uh, which I recommended as a happy chair that committee, was that we use this year as a chance each month to take a section, whatever section we want to take each month, and just kind of you know test it out. Yes, we're going to go through things and we're going to run into snag. But when you run into the snag, you don't throw the whole thing out, or you don't suspend the whole thing. You say, okay, what's the problem? Send it back to the committee and we solve this problem. That's how we make it better. I, I can't imagine anybody here would say, gee, a couple of people or several people have problems with a policy. So let's throw a whole policy manual out. Or let's suspend all policies. That's not the way we should function. We need to keep moving forward and becoming more positive and finding better ways of doing things. The way we do that is keep running issues as they arise and then say, okay, how can we resolve this? How can we make this better? But two and a half years of work by that committee, uh, and yes, I have a personal vested interest in it, of course, because I chaired the committee. I, I will admit that. But two and a half years of work, what does that say to the committee and to those people when you just say, okay, now we're going to suspend all the work? When, when a few people, several, I don't know what, how many we're talking about, because we really don't know, uh, have, have problems. And we ask every single time, are there problems? And yes, they're going to be problems. And we will deal with them. That's how we should approach every every issue that that comes up. We don't just suspend something the entire time. So I, I really I, I really have to say that I'm opposed to this. Uh, and I'm very disappointed in that people would actually say that after all the hard work that went into by members of this board. Ben? Um, you know, my thought is just that um, you know, the the way you described this proposed change is, you know, suspend the handbook until we have something that we can all agree to. Uh, if memory serves, we agreed to this handbook. Uh, we requested it and then we agreed to it. I went back through the minutes to try and find where we did that theoretically October, but, um, you know, whatever. Um, you know, it says right on the first page that the handbook's not policy. Um, I know that some of the most recent problems we had with the textbook, uh, for example, um, related to a special meeting that we were going to have last month, and a uh, board member pointed out that it didn't jive with what was in the handbook, and then the meeting got canceled, and some of us didn't like that. Um, and so all of a sudden it seemed like we were, the duties of the board were thwarted by the handbook. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think as long as we conceptualize the handbook correctly um, as a document for us to use but not to not to follow per se um, then it then it can be extremely helpful um, you know we can always say okay well the handbook says this we're not going to follow it in this instance because we don't think it'll work make a note so that we change the handbook um, you know the the email follow-up is a perfect example the page in the handbook that described the procedure didn't work First email we got hit the handbook and uh, hit, hit us under the handbook and we didn't respond correctly, so we changed it. And now the now now we know what to do. Um, you know, it's things like that where the handbook can become a body of accumulated wisdom, so to speak, um, from from different experiences that we have as a board uh, is what makes it useful. I don't I don't think it's supposed to tell us how to act and um, if board members use it that way we can always say listen this isn't a policy um, document we, we don't have to act that way 
but at least we have something that we're referencing and remembering and recording our thoughts and actions on different issues so that we know what works and what doesn't. Um, you know, as, as someone who was new to this board quite recently, um, you know, I, I don't think it hurts to have a document that can provide accumulated wisdom um, of, of the board, especially since, you know, because it's not a policy document, it almost doesn't make sense to me to, to suspend it. What, what does that even do? Um, so now we look at it for reference officially, and n n later we'll look at it unofficially. Um, so thank you. Barb? I think what upset a lot of people was that when we signed on to this handbook, we were told that it was <coughs> a guideline and best practices and we all had a chance to look at it and all. But then when we had the discrimination... I can't hear, I can't hear anything. Can you um, try speaking into your microphone? Um, when we had the divergent opinion... Okay. Can she hear me now? Can you hear her now, Gloria? It's frozen. It's frozen. It's frozen. Gloria, can, can you hear me now? We'll give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, thing, the thing that I found very cons constrictive was that we had developed an evaluation tool, a new evaluation tool, and there were guidelines to that eva evaluation tool for our superintendent, and there were certain steps to be followed. And we were following those steps, as, as I understood it, according to those guidelines. And all of a sudden we were stymied because we said, well, the book says only the president and the vice president can, can meet with the superintendent for the evaluation. And yet we had gotten this other guideline document that we had adopted as a board that had certain steps that we were to follow, which I thought were very beneficial for the superintendent and the board because you gave everybody an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one or board-on-one -on -one contact. And I thought it was really a blown opportunity. And I, I was shocked that suddenly this document overruled another document that we had adopted as a board as a new evaluation tool. So my idea and the idea of just, you know, leaving it there as our, a guideline document, but being very clear that it's just a guideline document. And over the course of the year, as Ben said, you know, if, if certain parts of it we think need refinement, then, you know, we can do it. But I just hate the feeling that all of a sudden this document, even though it's not policy, and we were told that it was just best practices in the guideline, suddenly restricted us from having the opportunity to, you know, dialogue with our superintendent. And it very much frustrated me because I thought that was a, an opportunity that was blown. So that, that's why I don't want to throw the whole thing out. That's why I said, you know, if we want to just set it aside in abeyance for a year, give us time to really see if there's any more kinks. Sean thinks there's more kinks in it that we need to, to work out. I'm perfectly willing to do that. Um, I realize that a lot of work and effort went into it, and there's a lot of good stuff in it. Um, but I hate to have it hanging over our heads that, no, you can't do that because this thing is written down in black and white and you voted on it. So that was my only idea. Other questions or comments? <laughs> Frozen again? Yeah. Gloria, go ahead and speak. Can anybody speak? Mm -hmm. No, you can get one. It's you. Okay. Um, I have to, okay. Um, okay, thank you. Um, Robert, it, it really wasn't anything hanging overhead. It's just something that's there as a guide. We can do what we wish with the, with the information. We made a suggestion. We did some research. We, what's in there is the best practices as we discovered them. But we don't have to go, go that route. We can say, all right, the handbook says this. It's not working. For, for us, 
or we have a better idea. So then let's at least deal with it. You know, let's just not ignore it because if, if, if as Ben said, you know, if we don't have some guidelines to look at, we'll just create the same mistakes over and over and over again. But at least we stop and say, oh, okay, these are the best practices as suggested. We want to go this route. The times change, things come up, they choose a different route, and there's nothing to prevent us from changing that. But at least honor the fact that we made some agreements and at least take, you know, at least consider that before we just rush ahead. That's the only issue that's come up. Why can't we just take that on as the first month, uh, take that section on to deal with right away since we've already hit that snag and make those changes? So that was the proposal I made in last month, that we each month take a section of the handbook, look at it, we hit a snag, let's deal with it now. We're not gonna, we're not gonna be able to identify every problem in the area, but at least we know this one right now. Okay, other comments or questions? Tim? I guess I'll take a stab here, yeah. I, I mean, again, this handbook came in, I think, in my first year, and so I was going to be the guinea pig for it, I think was the <laughs> phrasing. And, uh, you know, I've got to say, I've just found it to be extremely confusing. And I don't understand this kind of elevated status that it has when it's, it's nothing. It's not policy. It's not anything that we've really even voted on. It's, it's, so it's a mystery to me why we even refer to it. Quite frankly, I would make a motion to uh, throw it right out but I can live with uh, suspending it for a year and, and take a look at it behind the scenes. Um, I don't particularly want to keep rereading section after section after section uh, when we can use that time on, on other pursuits. So again, you know, I just <coughs> find it confusing, which leads to frustration with it. Um, and I think we have you know, policies up to 9,000 and something that we can always go to. And, and I thought that a lot of the, the handbook was, you know, not necessarily a rehash of policy, but restating policy in a, in a more condensed form. But, you know, I, I can't remember when I said it. It was in my first year or maybe early in my second year that I was afraid that it would be used as a cudgel, as a tool to kind of pound fellow board members over the head with. And I, I think that's happening, whether, whether it's intended that way or not. I think that's happening. I think that's a problem. I think we can operate uh, without it for a year and revisit it. Sean? I think as a, <clears throat> I think at the end of the day, it's mischaracterized, being called uh, a handbook for better school board operating procedures. Because they're not procedures. They're, they're, they're like somebody said. It's a guide. It's meant to. If it's meant to memorialize something, that's all it is. It's, it's notes. It's notes to us, you know, and how we've handled something in the past. And I think by characterizing it as a set of procedures, at least to, to so here's the new guy over here, you know, saw this is this is how we conduct business. But as I quickly found out last year when it came to the email policy, because I said that was terribly restrictive as a board member to feel like I can't respond to a member of the public. And I said that repeatedly during that dis during that discussion. I can't respond to a member of the public because our uh, our operating procedures say that it's not handled that way. And I, I've said I've said to this board, so it should be no surprise to anybody that I've always responded to emails, you know, and I've responded to people the, the way I said I would all along. Thank you for raising. Thank you for bringing this to my attention, um, which is not what the pol the procedures say because I, I I disagreed. I didn't think that they're they're right. They're they're a guide at best but a crutch at worst. Any other comments or questions? It sounds like there's um, some opposing views on this, but we brought it to the agenda, and so um, we can vote on it. My own opinion is that I think there are a lot of good things in the handbook, and it can be used as a guide. I remember when we were drafting it and putting it together, there were reservations about some of the points in there, and I think that's where it's hitting a snag, and so I'm not um, in favor of throwing it out, but I'm, I'm, I think it would be good to suspend it and also review, you know, we have, the, we have this book, now we enacted it, you know, the, the things in the book, and now we can go back and revise them. So that's how I feel 
do, do we have other questions or comments or um, we can go ahead and vote Ben so is the intent to send this back to communications committee and have them do all the work that they already did or <coughs> um, or is the intent for the board to work on it uh, what's the plan moving forward if we're going to suspend it do we have any intention of reinstituting it at a later date um, what's what's the next step on after this one well I think it came from the communications committee so it would make sense to bring it to that committee and if they if they are in favor of keeping it to go back and, and look at and see where the snags were um, and, and talk to everybody again because obviously Barb Tim Sean I think Christine um, saw some issues with it okay Kelly it doesn't seem that long. I briefly went through it and knew there was, I could go back and look if I needed to later. How did you pick what was going to be put in it out of the 9,000 policies? I'm, I'm having loud audio. Oh. All right. <coughs> Sorry, Gloria. Can, 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 can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> my, my question was um, it, like, uh, there's. I don't know if it's your problem or mine, but. All right. She's speaking into the microphone now. There might be a little bit of a delay. So to, the question is, um, out of the 9,000 or so? I'm not sure I understand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 Um, she wasn't <laughs> speaking, so you couldn't hear anything. So Kelly, I can answer your question. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the question, where, where was the genesis of this handbook? So the genesis of the handbook was the New York State School Boards Association. Mm -hmm. Jay Verona, who is general counsel for the School Boards Association, came and worked with the board maybe three years ago. And one of the handouts that he gave me was this document that NISBA had written in kind of a generic sense. So for school district ABC anywhere in New York State. So the work that the committee did was to take this generic handbook and customize it to Gilderland based Sorry. on our policies, our practices, and our preferences. So we didn't pick from among our policies. We started with a uh, document that NISPA had produced. So it was like, it kind of seems like those are kind of like the hot or focus areas, like email, media yes. relations. Yes, places where you can <coughs> run to, you know. Stumble. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Five, f 300 of our policies relate to the code of conduct, right? That's not in the board handbook because it's not really related to the board. You know? So a lot of our policies also come from NISBA, so that's why the documents seem to match up, as Tim said. So it was a kind of a, a generic school board recommendations and that we take and edit yeah right. so it's and not it a policy but policies. this is like it is recommend you know making a recommendation on how you can process emails or how you can handle media or whatever so just as a, a follow-up question because I, I don't remember why how did this end up in communications committee to begin with it seems like it'd be better suited for policy if it's based on that sort of thing. It doesn't seem like a communication charge. It seems more aligned with what the policy committee would be doing, even though it isn't a policy. But it's a written document <laughs> kind of outlining. It was, point, it was outlining. not supposed to be a policy. It was supposed to be a guideline. And I think, I'm talking over you. I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying that's the type of work that the policy committee does, even though it doesn't rise to the level of being a board policy. That more aligns with the work of the policy committee as opposed to the communications committee in my perspective so my question is how did this initially end up in communications committee my guess would be probably because they deal with PR and you know communicating with people and part of the handbook obviously is how we deal with the public and you know be it media or emails or those types of things that's the only reason why I would guess but you may have a better I, I don't recall. I, I think it just came out of a conversation around this table and which committee should mm -hmm. to do it, but I don't remember the exact details around that. Hmm. It just doesn't seem to me that that's the, maybe the best place for it. And I don't know if it, maybe the members of the communications committee don't want it to go back if they've already done it once. It might be better to do something different and send it to a different committee.
what what do we gain by suspending it? I mean, we, we look it over, but since it's not um, policy that can be changed easily um, by suspending, I, I don't see what we gain by suspending it, I guess. I, I don't. I think that's what Barb was explaining, right? That, it, that what, what we would gain is that you cannot use it to change the processes that we've been using that we think are best for that situation. I think she gave an example when that happened. I mean, that's the only reason. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in it, and, you know, we're not throwing it out. But I just didn't like the idea that that's sort of hanging over our heads, that if another issue were to come up, then say, oh, no, you can't do that because the handbook suggests, you know, that that isn't the way to go. If something like that happens, we can bring it up, we can talk about it, and, you know, we can fix things for, for the following year. But it gives us a year reprieve from that pressure of saying, oh, golly, is it in there or is it not in there? And as, and as I said, the example that I use is what really sort of got me why this was a guidebook and all of a sudden we, we've lost this opportunity. So mm -hmm. that was the main reason. Other questions or comments? So I guess we'll be voting then on the, sus the suspension of it, and then we'll have to make a decision on what to do with the handbook after we vote. Okay, okay. Um, so all in favor of suspending the handbook um, until we figure out another solution? Say aye. 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 Two, three, four, five, six. Uh, all opposed? Ben, Judy, Gloria, and Gloria. Are you for or against? <laughs> we can guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. against. All right, so passes 6-3. I'm against spending. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on to board committee reports. Start with audit. I'm going to fill in this evening because Teresa Gino is in <laughs> retirement from the board, so uh, I'll pick up where she left off. Uh, we had three topics uh, for the committee. Uh, the first was uh, the committee recommending the Board of Education approve the intermunicipal agreement for Questar 3 to provide internal auditing services for the 2019-20 school year, and you guys already completed that this evening. Uh, the second item was uh, corrective action plan review. So John Rizzo, who works in my office, presented and reviewed the district's corrective action plan in response to the 2018-19 internal audit risk assessment. And the report had identified five functional areas where improvements are recommended, and they are cash receipts, school lunch program, Medicaid, operational procedures and cross-training, and claims auditor. And uh, those uh, recommended improvements uh, for cash receipts and claims auditor have been completed. Improvements in other areas are in the process and are being monitored for completion during the 2019-20 school year. And then the final item was the external auditor request for proposal. Our five-year agreement with our current auditing firm, Weston Company, will end with the 2018-19 audit, which you'll be receiving in September. Uh, the committee reviewed the process and materials from, from the last external auditor hiring process. After discussion, the committee decided to follow the process used previously. The district will update the request for proposal document with current information. And then in early fall, letters will be sent to area auditing firms inviting them to respond to the request for proposal. After proposals are received and reviews, the audit committee will select firms to interview. On the basis of qualifications and the interview, the audit committee will make a recommendation to the Board of Education for appointment. Thank you, Neil. Uh, business practices? Gloria, do you Gloria? want to do this? No, I asked that you do it for me. Okay. okay. Uh, I have the minutes from the June 20th meeting. These have not been approved yet uh, because they haven't had another meeting, obviously. But I'll just go through uh, what, what I see. The first is the title for the cobblestone schoolhouse and you may remember we've had um, many discussions about this uh, and what the uh, what the committee discussed was 
the right of reversion, and that clause states that the property no longer be used for school purposes. The property, if it wasn't, the property would revert back to the heirs of the Van Rensselaer family. And recently, and this is sort of interesting, the district was notified of a deed following by uh, Shirley Hershenroder of Altamont gran granting any interest she has in the Cobblestone Schoolhouse property to a limited liability company established as Oxbury Cobble, LLC. Uh, Ms. Hershenroder claimed that her descendants, the Oxberries, owned the parcel of land that the schoolhouse is situated upon. That, that claim has not yet been substantiated, and as such, the deed filing is considered defective. Um, Chris Honeywell, who was uh, the lawyer here, said there are two basic options to consider. The first is to do nothing. The district would continue as the owner of the schoolhouse and would continue to be responsible for the ongoing maintenance and preservation of the structure. The second option is to establish clear legal titles to the property, thus paving the way for the school district to consider transferring ownership of the property to another entity who would then become the responsible caretaker. In either case, as we know, the, uh, as was pointed out long ago, the schoolhouse is on the New York State Registry of Historical Buildings and must be maintained in accordance with the requirements established by state law. Then we get to the fact that the district would need to spend about $10,000 to pursue a quiet title deed action. But Cliff uh, Nooney shared that in the near future, the district will need to spend an estimated $50,000 to repair the roof, repair the foundation, and to make internal or interior repairs. A very recent inspection of the schoolhouse also discovered the framework supporting the bell tower has rotted. The district will add temporary shoring to support the bell, but a permanent repair will need to be made at an undetermined cost. It's very expensive to maintain, and then when you hear all those numbers, not being on the committee, $10,000 um, <laughs> seemed like a, a good idea. After discussion, Chris Honeywell offered to put together for the board a timeline for pursuing a quiet title action, and he offered to come to the board uh, for that. There was also, they discussed the Gilbert Public Library Memorandum of Understanding, uh, and as you know, the school district, uh, the library follows the school district boundaries. And uh, Neil stated that he believed the agreement should be continued as it does clarify the roles, rights, and responsibility for each entity relative to a school district public library, which is what the <coughs> public library is. Uh, a library chartered as a school district public library receives its funding through taxes of school district residents. Uh, as you know, that was on the ballot this year, uh, voting on, on the library budget. And finally, the school district public libraries can request that the school district issue bonds and carry debt on their books for the library capital improvement project, and that was part of what we did this year. Um, and Chris Honeywell concurred that the memorandum of understanding should be maintained and updated. And the third thing they discussed was uh, Neil had said that, and I think we've already done this, the need to approve agreements with C.S. Arch and Turner Construction, oh no, this is new, for the $30.9 million capital improvement project approved by district voters. Uh, both firms, uh, Turner and C.S. Arch, will need to commence work early in July in order to start the construction next summer on high priority and safety components of the project. Jeff Honeywell, as in the past, will negotiate the changes uh, to the standard agreement to better protect and serve the board. Those agreements will be included in the uh, July 2nd board agenda for approval, which we did. And that was uh, what the meeting discussed, and obviously there's no new meeting until the new committee um, is formed. Judy, how quickly can we move forward with the schoolhouse? Because this is something that's been quiet, kind of hanging over us for years. The quiet title, I, I would ask yeah, Neil. Yeah, that it's disheartening that we still haven't made any progress on this when years ago we were arguing about it. I, I'm personally, from my perspective as a board member here, we've expended a lot of money on it. We haven't done much with it since then. 
we haven't except been using put money it into for the it. district except to put money into it. So I think we have a financial obligation to try to clear this title and get rid of it. So what is our timeline? Well, that's up to the board. And really the idea of, of bringing Chris <coughs> Honeywell in and having the discussion again is because really nothing has happened and we're continuing to see mounting costs. So the idea, idea was to bring it back in front of the committee again, um, try to get a direction that we could present to the board, which Judy just did. Mm -hmm. So there's interest in on the board's part in terms of moving forward. Chris Honeywell is prepared to draft the timeline as indicated and also to meet with the board and discuss that. And I would recommend that he be here as well because there are some legal questions that he could address and ed better educate the board on in terms of how the process works, what the timeline would be and what the outcome uh, would likely be and what will allow us to do. So um, if the board is in agreement, that's the path that they want to follow. I think we would just follow up with Chris. Maybe we can get him here in August or if not uh, September and have that start having that conversation with the board and get a plan that the board would approve to move forward if that's mm -hmm. the direction or will, or will of the board. Barb? I don't know if we need a motion. But Can you I talk into the, the microphone? At least the sense of the, the board. I mean, I'm certainly in favor of <laughs> dumping this off potato, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the business practice um, meeting when Chris Honeywell was talking about our options, and I'm also in favor of getting the quiet title and getting it off of our hands yes. as fast as possible. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I thought we were in the process two years ago or three years ago you know, of doing that you know, when Kathy was still on the board. so. Definitely, I would say you have our full support. You don't need a resolution, right? Uh, no, I think it can be consensus. I'm just okay. wanting to make sure there's... Neil, um, <laughs> yeah. my, my not... The district's a not-for-profit, right? Not for, it's a municipal corporation. Do we get to write off depreciation on things? Um, not that I'm aware of. On that. I'm, I don't know what depreciation we would... Have an of that sort anyway, but uh, <laughs> we could certainly find that out if that's mm -hmm. an issue. Okay. And so I don't think. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. And the listing on the listing on the registry doesn't preclude us from being able to dispose of the property because there's never been any federal money put into it. Right. We are we are not precluded from um, getting rid of the property. Um, the first step, really, in this whole process is. For the school district to establish it has clear legal title which it hasn't done yet and once we do that then that creates the opportunity for the board to talk about how then if we have clear legal, legal title and we want to transfer it to another party mm -hmm. who would that be how would we go about the process what kind of suitor would we want to consider um, do we have any conditions about who we would want to entertain offers from and those sorts of things but being on a historic register just register just means that an entity couldn't purchase the property from us and then do whatever they wanted to the property. They'd still have to do it. Any improvements to the building or changes to the buildings would have to be in compliance with uh, New York State in terms of historic buildings and making sure that they were maintained in the manner that the state requires. And then, so the, the quiet, the quiet uh, title deed yes. will be a court action yes. to establish the school district has clear title to the property. Mm -hmm. And it removed the cloud of the reverter back to the Van Rensselaer estate. In the essence, it's no longer used as a school building. And so, so right now, there's still that question of is there a Van Rensselaer heir who would come forward and claim the rights to the property or not? We haven't concluded that process to mm -hmm. try to reach all heirs and find out if anybody has a legal claim and wants the property. So that's the first step. If that that's it. If you're Van Rensselaer, call us. <laughs> yeah, we did reach out to one. We found one in Maine. Uh, he's not interested, but he said there's relatives sure. all over the country, so um, he can only speak for himself. But, uh, there's that a lot of kids. And, uh, oh, since 1840, the family has grown a bit. Does anybody oppose <clears throat> starting the process of searching for the quiet title, or the, the first step? Would your pleasure be to have it try to get it arranged for mm -hmm. August or yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah. I'll talk to Chris Honeywell. Thank you thank you. Um, next communications. Uh, we met in the beginning of June and um, as the outgoing chair we don't meet again until September so that's it till September. Thank you. Uh, policy Barb. We haven't met. And public comment number two. Do we have anyone sign up? No. Okay. And board issues, ideas, and sharing. <clears throat> I, can, 
Yeah, okay. Um, the end of the year with, with all of the activities, the graduations, the moving ups, the awards, there are a lot of things going on. And I was just disappointed that more board members weren't able to participate in more of the activities. It, I don't think it makes a bit of difference to the kids, but I know it makes difference to the parents. And uh, the parents are the one who really have to support us. And I would just wish that more people, um, since we know about all those events, as soon as we get the calendar, I go through and circle all of them, um, that I may be affected by, I would hope that more people um, could find the time uh, and the enthusiasm to go. It, it really does mean a lot to many people. Ben? Um. So this is just my usual reminder that um, we have some visioning work to do this year. Um, just glancing at the calendar we just adopted, uh, in the next 11 weeks we have one meeting. Uh, so there might be some time in there maybe that people want to um, start working on this. Um, you know, so it. it you know, it, it doesn't have to start where you think it starts, but it, it should start. And um, so I, I would just, you know, whether we want to start with a board retreat to work on cohesiveness, whether we want to start with, um, you know, the, the movie that the visioning committee picked out eight months ago, um, you know, uh, we should talk about it <laughs> before another year goes by. But, no, nope, no progress there. Kelly, do you have something? Wondering what the first step would be. Can you put Keep your mic? <laughs> I'm just wondering how you suggest to. Do you want to set a date, or do you want to do an email, or do you want to do a Google Doc? How do you want to get everybody to? Well, I, I would question? like to set a date, but conversation hasn't even yielded where we would start on that date. Um, so, uh, you know, depending on what we want to do there, it either needs to be noticed or not noticed. Um, you know, what do we want to talk about? What do we want to watch? Um, you know, if you, you know, so I would love to set a date, do something, or designate a committee like 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 we did before. Um, you know, uh, I know Gloria is of the of the opinion that we kind of need to move forward as a board. Uh, I'm of the opinion that the board likes it when a committee comes with something. Uh, ready, um, you know the some of the steps already done, um, so that the so that the board can get a presentation um, instead of like this, where I'm like I don't really know what you guys want. Um, so you know we could we could redesignate the visioning committee. Um, you know I don't know what steps you want to take, but it's July second, it's a new school year. Um, we said that we were going to try this without consultant, and um, very happy to try. <laughs> so, you know, any any thoughts anyone has, uh, share them. I mean, I'm in agreement too. I'm thinking though, instead of sending it to a committee to bring, after the whole board meets, maybe make an ad hoc committee of people from the whole board who are interested in coming up with a proposal. So um, a full meeting first. Yeah, or I guess we have to announce it, right? If we have a full meeting or if it's under the title of retreat, then then we can still meet. I'm not sure. Right. So depending on what the topics are that we're discussing. So right. if all we're doing is board professional development or board cohesiveness, we don't need to. That's not a meeting. Uh, but if we stray into, oh, this would be great for the school district, well, then it becomes a meeting. So I think just to be safe, we would have to have to notice it. Any other thoughts? about the, the starting the visioning process. I mean, my understanding from most people I've talked to is that everybody is, is interested in starting the process. It's just how. So if it starts with a meeting with the whole board, that might be the best, as opposed to having just a committee bring it and everybody not knowing um, or not being part of the process, I, sh I should say. So would we like <laughs> Linda to send out a doodle poll? Mm. Yeah. Is that OK with everybody? We'll try and try and make everybody 
and of nine people, or at least the best that we can as a starting point. Okay. And um, what would we be doing there? It's a good question. Is the agreement the agreement's not to have a consultant at all? Or is, there, is we, it if somebody has experience doing visioning or understanding how to? We did not budget that okay. for There's this nothing. year. So if, if you know someone who wants to do it for free, <laughs> which is okay, a possibility. I mean, it's not <coughs> out of the realm of possibility of finding, I don't know. Yeah. I, I know they'll do it for a fee, I think. I don't know. I didn't even, I just said, I've known people that have done it. That's, mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Um, it doesn't okay. sound like there's actual direction at the moment, so maybe Ben will yeah, take so the lead on ben, getting a date. Ben, what was this movie that you were talking about? Uh, the movie is most likely to succeed. Uh, the district purchased it in anticipation of a full meeting um, such as is being proposed. Um, it, it basically showcases some of the changes that the world is going through in the 21st century and how maybe our kids aren't going to be prepared for them. And then it shows some alternative um, schools that are trying to meet those challenges. Um, my only concern with the movie is that it's 90 minutes, um, you know, so it might have to be a longer three-hour thing where we come in, right. uh, watch the movie, and then we talk about it afterwards. Um, the the visioning committee had a few other videos that that we might like if people didn't want to do such a long thing. Um, but, you know, I, I think the most important thing is just to get us talking about it, um, and I think it, it, it'll merge from that. Um, you know, if, you know, I, I think that if Linda can't find a time for us all to meet in the next next 11 weeks, we should even just put it on the agenda for, for August. I mean, if you all think about it for an hour or two, jot down some notes, um, and we have a half-hour meeting, I mean, just anything to start would be would be good just to, you know, at this point, just to flesh out where we're going with the process. Where is this video? Is it something we yet. could just watch it on <laughs> at home? No, it's, oh, uh, it's sign it out? copyrighted, so we had to purchase it and you have to control the view it, view so it. Is it an, um, CD or something? If, if, okay. if you go to innovationplaylist.org, there's a free copy of it there. Hmm. Innovationplaylist.org. Can we just get a link sent to us then? Okay, if people will watch it, yeah. Um, then yeah, and then the board meeting can, uh, the meeting can just be discussing it. Yeah. Can I you also send have a copy you can, people can borrow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the... We tried that, Ben, and got stymied. I think it's newly added. Um, Ted Dindersmith just created a new part to his website. So um, I haven't gone to watch the movie on his website, but he tweeted it out today. So um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll send that around, and um, we can watch it and um, talk about it. And, and if it doesn't work, I mean, we have a license that allows us to show it to the public too. So if we watch it and we move forward in the six months, we kind of want to hold a, a town hall type thing uh, with the movie and a discussion afterwards. We, we have it now on file. Um, the, the visioning committee did watch the movie, so. John? You know, in terms of the board getting together too, I, I think having somebody facilitate that's going to be important. Um, than just us sort of sitting around. Because I think like what Ben's saying is that we don't know, we're, you're, trying, you're sort of stumbling, and I would be stumbling too, trying to figure out like what we're going to do next. Um, what has been our experience with this, the, our school boards association with NISPA and some of their, in their um, retreat programs that they run? Have we had any experience with those? Mm -hmm. We've had a couple. Do you want to share, Marie? <clears throat> well, we haven't done strategic planning with them. I'm not sure who in their organization is doing that, but Jay Rona has come to work with us twice. But it, that was more about roles, responsibilities of board members and that kind of a thing. So we would need to um, reach out to them and see who's available. Mm -hmm. It's a possibility. Can we do that then, find out from Nisba? Sure. Do you want to just go from there, Ben? We'll see what, if there's a meeting that we can schedule. Yeah. with all of us and then um, if we can find someone who can facilitate that that would be great and if not then at least whoever can meet we can come up with a plan as to how we want to even start the process right it's not on the agenda today so right I don't think people probably came planned to talk about it right but absolutely um, you know I, I think that the way forward is not as difficult um, as it might seem you know I, I agreed with the 
with the board originally that we probably didn't need to hire a consultant to really do this work. I thought we kind of needed it as an accountability thing, right? Someone who's going to do the work that, that we haven't really been doing. Um, you know, that being said, I don't really know what the board wants, right? So, like, I have an idea of what the process might be with my vision, but, you know, some board members are concerned about employee morale. Some board members are concerned about, um, you know, technology in schools. And so, you know, the first, the first thing that needs to happen is we need to kind of decide what what we're doing what what is this process even so yes uh meeting first and then we'll go from there can i just throw out one idea and i'm conscious of the um hour here but <coughs> about two months ago i i sat in on a um video conference that thought exchange did with a superintendent of schools somewhere in the midwest who did who, who led um, an entire strategic planning process through the lens of uh, thought exchange with a steering committee, and it was masterful. So 45-minute watch, and uh, maybe there's some ideas there. They did not have a consultant, and then the thought exchange generated what are the priorities of the community that we should be talking about rather than, you know, trying to fabricate them in a room by ourselves. So I'm... I can easily share the link to that. I think I had mentioned it in the mm -hmm. um, communications committee, but it's a more of a do-it-yourself and you know, kind of a task force like we have going with the start time piece. So the same kind of idea. John? In the past, we've done the survey to sort of decide to identify what the priorities are. Could we use thought exchange this year to do that to accomplish that, or is that are we too small of a group to to make effective use of it? On the small side, as a board, I mean, you, you can use it for that, but it's, I think the 20 is kind of the magic mm -hmm. number where it's robust enough to, to, to do that. Can you oh. use that thought exchange? Do, do we own that thought exchange? We own the license to it. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but can, I mean, isn't that something we could invite other people, just like you did with the other thought exchange, like start mm -hmm. with the community yes. to find out and then. Gosh. I'll show you the link. Yeah. You did a great job. As long as we, we could use it again, I, I start with that. Like, I think you should have a task force. I think you should start, like, with a task force, like, with Ben as the lead, maybe. <laughs> and then, <laughs> since he seems to be bringing up all the time, but, uh, or often, um, is that a thing you could do with a sort of task force? Not, not as a committee, but just kind of, like, a couple of people that are interested in, or at least organizing the first meeting, and then move forward. I, I'm not sure how, you would, how they could proceed with it, what's allowed to do, or? I, I, think, we need a, I think we need a full meeting first. Yeah. Because, uh, again, I don't really know where we're going with it yet, you know. Um, what, once we have a full meeting, we can kind of decide how to break it down. But I think the board kind of has to have an agreed vision of what the visioning process needs to look like um, before we can tell a committee to go ahead, because last time we did that, the committee came up with half a dozen videos, and then it sat for eight months, right? So, um, right. So we want to buy in from every the whole board first. Exactly. So, um, Marie, can you send that link out to everybody? Sure. And then we can everybody try and watch it before we have this full meeting. Yep. And then come to the meeting with ideas and um, be prepared to talk about visioning. Just focused on visioning. Since we've been talking about it for a long time. <laughs> and the movie link, too. And the movie we link. both of those. Yeah, yeah can you send that out, Ben, if it's out. available? That should give us lots to talk about. Okay. And Marie said she had a copy. I yeah. have a copy if anyone wants to borrow it. See if the link works. So is Linda sending a doodle on or what yes. time period are we talking about? Before the next board meeting? It's just this summer, because yeah. we have 11 weeks yeah. off. 11 I, I figure we can fit one meeting in there, at least. So I guess before the school year starts. Before the school, yeah. You know, no committees are, you know, just we have an opportunity here before the school year to get started on this. Any other thoughts? Any other board issue sharing ideas? Okay, I need a motion to enter into executive session to discuss the following matters. To discuss issues pertaining to negotiations with the Gilderland Teachers Association Teaching Assistant Unit, to discuss superintendent's compensation, to discuss potential lit litigation, and to discuss the employment history of a particular person. Moved. Ben? 
Second, Sean. All, all, um, yeah. all in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Passes 9-0. We'll have to come back out for some of the issues. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maria. <laughs> um, I'm going to yeah. I'm going to disconnect and Marie is going to connect back up with we'll you come back. in executive yeah. session. I just sent you a new link. Oh, yeah. Sent you a new <coughs> link. I'm watching that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for that <laughs> Oh, there was a script. <laughs> <laughs>